And can you give us a little bit of background on what exactly ZeniMax Online Studios is and what you guys do over there? Yeah, so ZeniMax Online Studios um, is a part of ZeniMax Bethesda, um, which up until relatively recently was an independent publisher of very large AAA video games um, that uh, not too long ago was acquired by uh, Xbox and the Microsoft Corporation uh, to be part of the greater uh, Xbox game studios. Um, so we, uh, we develop uh, video games in-house. We're primarily known for Elder Scrolls Online, uh, which is ex an extension of the very well-established Elder Scrolls universe um, that we also publish here at Bethesda. Um, but I am driving uh, an independent team working on a new intellectual property um, and have been doing that for about four and a half years. Hey everyone, it's time to Nefes and Chill, and what you just saw was an excerpt from an interview done with Ben Jones, the creative director of uh, ZeniMax Online Studios, or rather a creative director, briefly mentioning uh, his IP that they've been working on, a project that they've been working on uh, over at Zoss for the past four or so years. Uh, the interview will be linked down in the description below along with a few other sources of information and references that you guys can consult yourselves and uh, you can follow your own rabbit hole with all that. Um, but before I get into this new IP or project or game that Zoss is uh, kind of getting into, I'm going to lay down some foundational uh, stuff because a lot of ESO players or even gamers in general often get confused and conflate like Bethesda with ZeniMax Online Studios or ZeniMax with Microsoft and they don't really understand uh, how a lot of this works or they often get mad at the wrong developers for a different game. So just to uh, kind of clear up the confusion, at the very tippy top, we do have Microsoft in this brilliant paint graph uh, that recently acquired ZeniMax Media, as you guys know. Um, and before Microsoft, well, there was ZeniMax Media at the very tippy top, now it's under Microsoft. ZeniMax Media, uh, the CEO of which, recently, well, who also recently, unfortunately passed away, uh, Robert Altman, uh, has an in-game, in or rather in-house uh, publisher and also development studio with Bethesda, called Bethesda Softworks. And under ZeniMax Media is this entire array of studios. So like we have Bethesda Game Studios, which you guys, most people are familiar with, you know, where Todd Howard is the director and producer and below him is a completely different hierarchy. ID Software, which is uh, responsible for Doom, Quake, and Rage. Arcane Studios, as you guys know, Dishonored, Great Game, and Prey. Machine Games is well known for the Wolfenstein series, uh, which has made a comeback recently. Tango Gameworks is more well known for the recent Ghostwire Tokyo, and of course the Evil Within game. And lastly, that most of you are familiar with in my channel, ZeniMax Online Studios, under which is, a you know, of course, a different kind of hierarchy compared to Bethesda Game Studios. So under ZeniMax Online Studios is the studio director at the tippy top, Matt Fearer. And under him is, and this is kind of like speculation on my part because I don't work there. Uh, most players I know don't really work there, right? Uh, but from what I've gleaned from my time as a uh, longtime player and also former ESO class representative, it seems to be a very uh, nice, cool environment in which like there's some sort of uh, free flow kind of like structure where creative director like Rich Lambert is consulting with other lead devs and the lead devs under them there's like different departments and whole different sections of a company that most people don't think about you know like uh, legal department insurance and stuff like that and then of course coming out from ZeniMax Online Studios as a product is Elder Scrolls Online which is linked with Bethesda Game Studios where Todd Howard in the in, in the past has had a lot of say in what ESO could go into in terms of content and lore like hey no Akaviri uh, chapter, no Dwemer chapter, crazy shit like that. And of course, now coming out with a different product from ZeniMax Online Studios, which I'm going to be talking about in this video, is a new game with a, its own creative director and probably different hierarchy, Ben Jones. So Ben Jones is a creative director that you guys saw in the interview, and uh, he was just talking about, hey, we've been working on this IP for at least four and a half years. And for those of you keeping up with ESO stuff and other content creators in the ESO sphere, you'll know that there's been whispers of a new game that Zoss has been developing uh, since about 2019, 2018. 
And we've always kind of heard about it. A lot of people have speculated since then. Like, is Zoss not caring about ESO? Are they just focusing more on their new IP? And uh, I'm going to talk about what we know so far, and you guys can speculate on your own as well. So what we know so far, based on a few resources, including the uh, uh, 2021 NVIDIA game leak, in terms of like, so GeForce Now had a leak in which there were thousands of titles that weren't available to, you know, the public yet. And there were like thousands of games just kind of <laughs> in the GeForce Now files. And amongst the files leaked, and there's like an entire list of games leaked, is something under ZeniMax Online Studios called Project Kestrel. Uh, Kestrel being a type of bird, and I don't think it really shows anything in terms of like, oh, what kind of game is this? Is it a bird game? Is it where a bird POV where you shit on people's cars? No, probably not. But internally, at least at Zaz, it's called Kestrel. Uh, ben Jones has been the creative director of the game since February of 2018. There are uh, confirmed to be at least 50 game designers and a full developer team of over 200 people working from all over the world. Meaning, there is five satellite offices. So uh, there's the main Maryland headquarters for Zoss, but they recently opened up a headquarters in San Diego. Uh, and of the five, of the 200 developers that work in these five satellite offices, uh, half of them aren't even in the main headquarters. Uh, a lot of them seem to be scattered around the globe and also in San Diego and elsewhere. Uh, what we do also know recently is Lehman Tuttle, the second ESO lore master who uh, took over after Lauren Schick, uh, actually left his position as the ESO or Elder Scrolls lore master to be the lore master for this upcoming new IP that Ben Jones is the creative director of, which is pretty interesting. Um, and it's interesting because they actually, uh, in the interviews with Ben Jones, the story and world building for the new IP began even before he became creative director or started working on the Max Online Studios. And it seems that Lehman Tuttle actually replaced uh, like one of the lead writers and or lore master for the new IP, which is, which is you know, it's, it's a lot of investment at this point at which you're already replacing people uh, in terms of the writing and direction of the game. Uh, aside from the current team, there are 47 positions that they're still hiring for on their official website. Um, there's also a, a lot of openings for ESO as well. And according to Ben Jones, considerable investments and resources are being poured into the new IP and that it's a, a very big project. Such a big project, in fact, that Alex Tardif, if you recognize that name, Alex Tardif, you'll recall that I covered an interview in a previous video for ESO where we went into how uh, multi-threading works and Tardif is actually the lead graphics programmer for ESO, and in his interview, uh, talked a lot about how the graphics worked with ESO, how multi-threading was working, um, and it, it seems to be a really cool dude. And now we find out he's currently working with the Kestrel team to build a new engine for the game. So they're definitely, at least over at Zoss, sharing a lot of talent, uh, a lot of workload, I guess, between a couple of the ESO uh, staff, it seems like, from the outside with the new IP. Um, and of course, that Ben Jones has, the fact that Ben Jones has stated the story of the game has changed 10 times over the last four and a half years as they develop kind of tells us too that it's not a finished product. We don't know when it's coming out. I mean, four and a half years is a decent amount of time. And judging from the time frame it's taking, it's definitely something maybe in the MMO sphere. I mean, let's think about it, right? It's under ZeniMax Online Studios. So, ZeniMax Online Studios, first product, Elder Souls Online. What's next? Was it a new MMO? Is it, you know, is it a multi... It has to be a multiplayer game, ZeniMax Online Studios. I don't know exactly if it's going to be MMO, but if it is, that's going to be a lot of competition for it out there in the market, even against ESO. Uh, we're, we're just not sure yet. And of course, uh, Ben Jones has talked a bit more about how the new IP would work with some concepts. He was very adamant in, in establishing clear, tangible guidelines for the direction and vision of the game uh, before it, they get too deep into uh, the development process for the new IP. Ben Jones has also stated 
and mentioned actually, this is really interesting, the importance of having a, a quote unquote mobile connectivity to the product. What does that mean? Well, it's not a mobile game like Diablo, but there may be options to use mobile devices to interact with and enjoy the game to a certain degree. Immediately in my head, that reminds me of all these cool mobile apps like uh, Destiny Item Manager or Dim uh, that Destiny 2 has where you can manage your inventory and stuff from your phone, which is pretty, you know, freaking great. Um, and it seems like they have the technology to do that for this new IP, although not with ESO. Uh, he, he also stated that he's getting a lot of, well, not a lot, but a bit of help from Xbox in helping them set up this kind of mobile, like, interactivity with the new IP, which is pretty interesting, too. Um, and, of course, it, it seems they are going for a multi-platform development. He's mentioned a couple times where hey, it's pretty hard doing, like, uh, uh, the development of a game for multiple platforms, console and PC. So I'm not sure if this new IP is going to be both for console and PC. I think it will be because, again, like I said, in that graph er with that graph earlier, ZeniMax Media is owned by Microsoft, and Microsoft uh, owns Xbox, and Xbox, by, by uh, extension, owns ZeniMax Media. So I think they at least do want an Xbox product. Um and that, that's pretty much all the information we know so far. There is, it seems, some resources being shared internally. It also seems like there is a bit of a lot of focus on the new IP. What does this mean for ESO players or for the future of ESO? Well, it's not clear yet, but I think this will give a lot of uh, players the impression that, oh, they don't care about ESO anymore and they're just focusing on this new IP. I think that. It has some half truth to it. I think they don't. It's not that they don't care about ESO anymore because they need ESO, because ESO under this entire umbrella of uh, corporate organization is making the most money for ZeniMax Media right now, um, according to earlier numbers reports and stuff like that, where it's said it's said to have surpassed the uh, amount of profits made by Skyrim and the Fallout series combined. So it's like, well, why would they abandon ESO? Uh, but I do think that they are probably going to uh, continue focusing somewhat on ESO just to keep the funding going from ESO to fund this new project for sure. Uh, as for the quality of the IP or the quality of ESO, that's kind of a different story uh, in my opinion. And a lot of people have been asking me, well, you know, we've been hearing all these rumors about this new IP coming out from Zos. Uh, would you, would you, would you Nephis, play a new MMO from Zos? And, you know, I gotta be a little honest here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to invest a, into another Zos MMO. Um, because it, it, it kind of leaves a bitter taste in my mouth when it's like, Okay, well, if you're diverting some resources, and of course the, the the funding is really important from ESO to this new IP, what would prevent you from doing it again for another IP down the road, right? It's kind of like, I don't know what, what's going on here. And I don't know if it's a new MMO. Like, again, we don't know what kind of game it is. It's definitely multiplayer-based, and def probably Xbox and PC-based. I just don't know if it's going to be a... Um, uh, MMO. It could be MMO, but I'm just not sure if I personally would want to invest into that new MMO when, especially in my eyes, ESO, even after about, you know, almost nine years at this point, if you've been playing since like almost 10 years at this point, if, if you've been playing since beta, right? Like me, I, it's, it's still not finished in terms of a lot of things. It still has so much potential to uncover if they want to go for that potential. I just don't know if I would want to jump ship from a unfinished product to another unfinished product if it is an MMO. But I do hope that, you know, just like for anything else, I don't wish the worst. You know, I hope that it's a really fun game. It's going to be a great way for, you know, new content creators to break into the market. I hope it's going to be entertaining. I hope it's going to be very fulfilling and awesome for the developers that are working on the game. I hope the best. Uh, but we'll see when we see. But that's pretty much all the information I have. Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. If you want to keep up with more information in the future with uh, the level of information and uh, stuff we provide on this channel, definitely do subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. And I'll see you guys soon. 
Please do stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving. See ya.